Live from the Panera Studios, it's the Reading with Robin show, brought to you each week by my friends at Panera Bread. It's where I go to start my day just right. There's nothing like that first and second mug of coffee. It's always hot and fresh and at your neighborhood Panera. I even take some to go. Let Panera cater the holidays. Panera Catering takes the stress out of meal planning for your holiday events, big and small. Visit PaneraBread.com. Check out all of the delicious menu items. Order ahead, and they'll have it ready for you for a quick and easy pickup. Give yourself a gift this holiday season, and let Panera do the cooking. All at Panera Bread. Reading with Robin also brought to you by Point Street Reading Series. It's the third Tuesday of every month. This month's series is on the 20th with authors Anne Hood, Michael Ruhlman, Holly Robinson, Mary Capello, and Jason Diamond. For more information, please visit Point Street Reading Series on Facebook. And now, enjoy the show. Does this Volvo make my butt look big? I love the title. I'm on the phone with Annabelle Monahan, the author of this fabulous book, Thoughts for Moms and Other Tired People. Annabelle writes for TheWeek.com, The Huffington Post, and The Rye Record. She's the author of two novels for young adults, A Girl Named Digit and Double Digit. She's also the co-author of Click, The Girl's Guide to Knowing What You Want, and making it happen. She teaches novel writing at the Writing Institute at Sarah Lawrence College, lives in Rye with her husband and three sons, and we are having the best time chatting. I love this book. Welcome to Reading with Robin Annabelle. Thank you so much, Robin. Thank you for having me and for liking my book. The Forward by Lee Woodruff, and I am a huge fan, is just so fabulous. And we we chatted about um, her novel. I, I does she have a novel coming out? I hope. What is she doing? She doesn't have one coming out now, but she is feverishly working on something. I'm so glad to know that because I, I loved know. that last book so much. And her forward is so loving, generous, gracious, and so Lee. I love the way she compares you to Nora Ephron and Irma Bombeck, like two of my favorite writers Can you ever. imagine? When wow. I read that. I actually, I, I had to email Lee, and I said, you know, I'm crying right now, and I'll read the le- rest of it in a little while. I just, I was so overwhelmed um, by that. She, I mean, she, she is very generous. Oh, it was gorgeous. Oh, also, and Liz Gilbert. I got, I got stuck at yes. Nora and Irma. She Lee, had me at Irma. Yes, yeah, she had I me. Mean, absolutely. <laughs> right. I mean, oh, my goodness. Irma Bombeck's book, um, If Life is a Bowl of Cherries, Why Am I Always in the Pits or whatever, I remember we we were talking uh, Annabelle and I were talking off air before we began, but uh, that was one of my mother's books. Like I have all of my mother's books, and that well-worn paperback. I could, I always thought yeah. that was such a clever title and such a fan. And these essays are so funny, deep, heartfelt, smart, and easy to read because they're just like a couple of pages each. So it's just like the yeah, no, they're, they're the, the kind of book you could keep in the car and read it while you're waiting at pickup. Or driving. You know, they're just little. Yeah. Or, we can't read it while you're driving, Robin. That's just not safe. So silly of me. It's we can't. Right. I can't stand behind that. We can. We absolutely cannot support writing, writing and driving, <laughs> no. driving and no. reading. But they're no. just. It's perfect, and it is such a fabulous. It's always the book giving season, but this is such a great book to give to your girlfriend. Thoughts for moms and other tired people. It's. <laughs> It's when I read reading these essays. I mean, we know that we do a lot as moms, as women, but I mean, pat yourself on the back. It's it, on top of that, you wrote about it. It's really fabulous. The title for the book. Did you go through a lot of titles? This is a really clever one. In the you know, this was the original title, mm-hmm. and then I had this feeling. I don't want to publish a book where there's going to be any kind of focus on my butt. Like, I just didn't want that to be, there's something about that that just given the status of my butt, but I just didn't want to be talking about that. So I went through a hundred other titles and then I just kept coming back to it. And I, I, so it just, it, it, I mean, I I thought it was sort of sounds fun, but uh, there's something about uh, when you're taking care of children, you mm -hmm. do stop noticing what you're wearing. Because I personally just drive my car the whole day. So no one sees me except for from the shoulders up. So the Volvo it's true. may you just be you just wave to people, bit. right? And yeah. so it's yeah. yeah, right. So it's the Volvo, yeah. and it's this beautiful 
blue color that really pops. And I don't know, in Rye, same thing in Rhode Island, when I was at that stage with my kids and driving them around, you're right, that's where you sort of wave. As long as you're dressed from the top up and nothing happens to your car uh, where it breaks down uh, and you need to <laughs> call somebody and have them see that you're halfway dressed. But you just, like, wave it's at It's a matter of time. It, that's going to happen to me. Certainly living on the edge. I remember one time dropping off at school in the morning, and I'm sure I was in my pajamas. And sometimes I like to play, let's see how much gas and how long it will go, because I just don't feel like pumping it. And I know it's a bad idea, right? And I remember one time going, this is so stupid, I will never do this again, because if something happens, I'm not dressed. I was just so risky. It was like my suburban mom risky behavior. And yeah, you know, if that's as far as it goes, you're probably clear. <laughs> <laughs> that's not that bad. But I, there's one essay in this book about um, just how crazy September is and how disoriented mm-hmm. I feel in September. And I tell the story that I uh, was at the supermarket at like 9 o'clock in the morning on a Monday, and then my phone rang, and somebody said, where are you? I, said, I don't know. Where, what, what do you mean? Well, it turns out I was in charge of the kindergarten coffee, and I was in charge of bringing all the food for the kindergarten coffee. So I ran into the store. I bought a bunch of stuff. I ran over to the party, and I got there thinking I'd gotten away with it, but when I took off my coat, I was in my pajamas. <laughs> Love that. But you got the I had never there. gotten dressed. That is so funny because, you know, you're so busy getting everything ready for the kids and just to hop in the car. But, right, if you didn't think you had to be at school with the food and you were just doing, it can happen. You can sort of see it sure. poking out of somebody's jacket when you're, like, at the supermarket early because, you know, then there's that nod and wink to other moms because it's such a harried sort of day. It's exhausting reading what, what goes on in a day and sort of remembering the details and one of the stories about uh, dropping, you know, what you thought would be sort of like a a vacation as a mom in the summer. You'd have time for your tan, but you're picking up, dropping off, getting one off to work. And before you know it, the day's gone. Like, where does the day go, Annabelle? I I don't know. I don't know. And I actually think the summer, the way my life is structured, the summer is actually harder Mm. than the rest of the year. And I always think I'm going to do tons of writing during the summer. I'm just going to do, you know, dig into all these projects. But I almost never get out of my car. Lofty goals, really. Yeah, and so, I got a lot of goals. Yeah, does this Volvo make my butt look big? It is just out. It's by Annabelle Monahan, And you can visit her website at AnnabelleMonahan.com. Find her on Twitter, on Instagram, on Facebook. I know you had a fabulous event yesterday. Women must incre- you know, just connect incredibly to these essays and well, tell you. you their stories. Do you ever get like more ideas like, oh, I'll do another volume of this, or just ideas for well, your no, column? You know, I, I take my ideas just from exactly what's happening in the moment mm-hmm. in my house. You know, if I'm if I'm if I'm sick, I write about you know what it's like when the mom gets sick. Mm. If uh, you know, just exactly what's happening. But people always try to give me an idea, <laughs> and if I hear an idea three or four times, and I think, well, maybe there is something to this. Wow, you, know, you got to write about. You got to write about. Don't you love that? So do. My idea yeah, for I'd your book, for your essay, and right, there's so much. The material is never ending. It's the reason to have children. I mean, another great yeah. reason to have children is the. Do you ever think like, wow, I didn't see this coming, or now, you know, what now? I never How thought any of this coming. Yeah. But you know what's been really interesting for me since I've, I've been writing this column for five years, which seems like a really long time, and I keep getting the same comments, which are just me too, and oh my mm-hmm. gosh, I've always thought that. And it it surprises me how much, you know, no matter what our circumstances or how many kids, whether we work or we stay at home, there's so much about motherhood that's so universal. Mm-hmm. Yes. You know, no matter what you're doing, you've got to go to the parent-teacher conference. You can't get out of that. <laughs> so it's just no, – it's you really – you really can. It's been really fun to see, actually. You know, people just all walks of life kind of all relating to the same part of motherhood. And that's the thing when you're writing a book, and I love a book of essays that I can relate to, and I can, like you said, put in the car, pick up, put down, read online at the supermarket or wherever, because I love to just get my reading in. I was walking my dog and reading your book, so then I get to talk <laughs> to neighbors about your book, and people were asking, and, you know, so I'm selling and walking and hand-selling, but each and every column I connected to and saw every one of them and just sort of nodding along, laughing. So you have your tree up right 
after Thanksgiving or before, and then it comes down the next morning after Christmas? That like yes, clockwork. That's, that's the truth. That's wow. The truth. I get super excited about Christmas, and then I get so tired of Christmas. I can't mm-hmm. look at it one more day. It's yeah, just, yeah. out on the curb. <laughs> I was wow, you know a lot about me, Robin. I, I do, well, because, and that's the thing, <laughs> when you're reading somebody's essays, and I and I read closely, and also I have to say the pictures that that had the chapters are so, and this one in the hair dryer, this could, um, things could be worse. So many, of they are so adorable. Are they? That's my sister. Oh, it's, okay, I was going to say, are these family yeah. pictures? <laughs> So, yeah, so some adorable. of them are some of them some of them are new, but yeah, so this woman Jill DeMassimo, uh who's a photographer, went through all of my old photos, and I mean old, there's a picture of my mother in the sixties in this I saw that um, that was great, it was great, and then she came up with some new ones i I thought she did a great job, it's really yeah, it's charming it's it, it just really the feel of the book is certainly illustrated with the photography that's attached to them so you said i know a lot about you and and when you write about yourself and your family this is what happens but is there any place that you um in the essays are nonfiction? they're from you know do you write about the kids do they ever say anything about their lives or is anything sort of off the table and you write about oh your there's marriage so much and, that's off the table Okay. There's so much. When we actually, I have a system where everyone in my family has to read everything before it goes out. Oh, I because like that. Because you can't, you can't have teenagers and start talking about them in public. I mean, you yeah. just, you know, I know. You can't. Yeah, my teenagers teachers, don't even right. like me to be in public. So, <laughs> I, you know, everything has to be cleared. And it was funny because I do tell this one story about my teenage son where he did something really stupid, and I just wanted to write about it. And mm-hmm. I, I, writ, I wrote the essay and I gave it to him, and he laughed so hard. He's like, "Wow, that was really so stupid." Yeah, publish it. I like so, that. You know, he has this one. He has a great sense of humor. I like so that. I thought so, that was terrific. So they all read it, and then if everybody's okay with it. So do you ever get like three yeses, one no, two, two, you know, or everybody else? Well, it's mostly if it's, if it if it's about someone, mm-hmm. you know, the you know the little one doesn't have to prove some something that's about the teenagers. Oh, I see um, what you're saying. Okay. I wrote one about my marriage that you know I I wrote the whole thing and then I sent it to my husband at work and I said I just wanted to write this either way but what do you think about me publishing this and I was surprised he right away said love it go for it oh, I love that the one about growing up in a marriage private. was yeah. it that one yeah that yeah. was re- I thought that was really beautiful and I Thank know you. um, yeah you're welcome and I know you know similarly engaged around the same age as you and you know a lot of parallels here and I thought it was just really very beautiful the way you described the progression of a marriage and what the expectations are and what winds up being important it was I think it was really beautiful and um, you're welcome because you know you write an essay and it's nice to know that it's out on the page but when you really want to publish it it's especially supportive to know you've got your family um, you know not running and you know once something's out there it's out there (laughs) You know, right? right, I know, and that's something <laughs> you, you can't must take it back. You know, you talk to the kids about that, right? About what they put out there. I mean, these are things that who would have seen this kind of stuff coming? Really, sort of showing them or explaining to them when you put something out there. Now yeah. you can't take it back. It, this is when I go to speak at schools. This is almost the second thing I say every single time I go to talk about writing. I'm like, just make sure when you mm-hmm. write something and you put it out there, it's out there forever. People really do not appreciate yeah. that enough because you yeah. figure, right, and and just all of the things that we just didn't have to deal with, um, the photography that snapped and put out there forever, and just, you know, that becomes a whole string of other issues. But So you do a lot of speaking at the schools. Um, yeah. That must be really fun in a lot of it's ways. It's so much fun. It's great. I love it. I love it. You, middle school kids who are interested in writing – will ask the most interesting questions. It's just always, I love it. It's one of my favorite things to do. Yeah, I mean, when you can really get them talking and opening up and um, and you write, so your YA books, are, is that the age range, the middle school range that you're They're that you actually write? all 12 and up. Okay, so 12 and up, yeah. yeah. So then you get to really work with them firsthand, and then the kids that are enthusiastic about writing are readers too. And They are. So those are like kindred spirit kind of kids, you know those kinds of kids 
and I'm talking with Annabelle Monahan. Her brand new book, Does This Volvo Make My Butt Look Big, is out on the shelves. You can visit her website, AnnabelleMonahan.com. Find her on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, every place you need to be. And I love the pictures of the Volvo cookies that one of your friends made for your party. Can you believe that? They look delicious. It was the cutest thing. I walked in. I could not believe it. It was such, yeah. it was such a cute idea. There's nothing And they like, were delicious. Yeah, supportive friends, and they were delicious. And then you had a great event you were just telling me about also. That one happened at um, the library's luncheon. So oh, that, that was like so a fundraiser nice. of that? Yeah, it's a, it's a fundraiser that this wonderful uh, school, high school, does to raise money for its library. And they asked me to come speak there this year. So I got to be the keynote speaker and sign a bunch of books, and that was terrific. It's such a great gift to give, a signed book. Now, do you have book plates or, I mean, it's the holiday season. This is a great book. Everybody needs a laugh, especially around the holidays. A laugh and a sure. connection. You know, they're funny and they're warm and they're sensitive and they're smart. And, again, nodding my head along and reading. So I, there are so many people that I know this would make such a great gift. It, are you um, – do you do signed book plates or something like that, or is there? Yeah. Does your local yeah. bookstore have them signed? I mean, how would people? Uh, my do that? local bookstore does have them signed, and I can do signed book plates too. Yeah, I think that's a great thing to do. So you can get in touch through any of those things I just said. Find Annabelle on Facebook or on um, on her website, and you'll write whatever on the plate. People can just put that in there, and then voila, you've got a wonderful gift, and you could put. It is something really fun with it. I love the car antlers, um, Mom, Mom at Christmas. <laughs> when I see those things, I see, I think the same thing, like, is this the only thing left that you can do to celebrate the holiday? I think they're so dumb looking. I can't I even think that them. every single woman around the holidays is just one inch away from completely <laughs> losing her mind. And that was a part, part of the thought about releasing uh, this book at this time, is I mm-hmm. think that women, that moms just need like a little ha-ha, yes. maybe a little cocktail, just a little, yeah. just something to take it down when the pressure is so, so high all month. It's There's so much going on, and it's so crazed, and... I've heard people saying, I remember before Thanksgiving hearing people saying how much they were looking forward to Thanksgiving, but then, oh, Christmas. And I thought, like, obviously that's so sad. (laughs) It's supposed to be such a joyous time. That's what the movies show us, right, in our our photographs from when we were kids. But it's so amped That's because we were kids. We were kids. We remember Christmas as being so, because it's all about the taking. It's all the magical, right, exactly. You don't see what the adult. mother's job is the giving. You don't really see that, and you talk no. about your relationship with Siri, speaking about giving and taking, and <laughs> I thought that was very funny. Talk about that essay a little bit. I love that one. Well, I was I was writing about how um, at some point in everybody's life you become Siri for someone when they're having a hard time and they just keep pressing the button to tell you stuff or <laughs> ask you for stuff, um, and they don't want it. They don't ever ask you how you are. And I have I have a couple of friends like this just in crises at this point, but my teenagers feel like that, and um, they're just always asking for things, food, I need this, I need this, and mm-hmm. you know, seldom do you get back the, how was your day, Mom? How did that work out? When they and get older, they'll do it. Yeah, that's Well, I, I remember turning around. I remember when, when I started to, to recognize my mother as a person, not just a uh, something between something that someone that was going to get me something. You know, I started to yeah. be a little more concerned about her well-being, and I think that's what growing up is: is seeing your parents as human beings. Exactly. I mean, that is all part of it, and it's some days easier to remember than others when you're just frazzled and putting antlers on your car <laughs> <laughs> to celebrate the cheer. I also loved your website, the things that we don't know about you. I oh. thought that was hilarious. You're just so funny. You're my kind of funny. And I, oh, this is thanks. just, you know, for reading with Robin listeners, if you think what I think is funny is funny because it is funny, does this Volvo make my butt look big? Thoughts for moms and other tired people is something you're going to want on your shelf and a few extras for your friends because they will say, thank you. I needed that. You read Pride and Prejudice nearly every year. That's for sure. I don't know right. why either. I just love it. And it never gets old. I always kind of wonder what's going to happen. See, and I read it every year. But I just love it. 
that's so funny, right? Like what's going to happen now even though you've read it? And that's the true – you just get so – into the story that even though you know you're in the story at that moment reading along with yourself. So I could see that. And I also love my favorite movies generally and with a prom. Which are some of the your favorites? Uh, well, not Carrie, I guess. <laughs> no. No, I don't, I don't ever want to watch a dark movie. Ever. I don't like I just I, I agree. I, yeah. All that movie and then the girl, you know, she's a little reserved and then she lets her hair down mm-hmm. and the boy takes her to the dance. I mean, the... I just love those movies. I do, too. You know, John Hughes really had it oh, all figured out. Right. And did, speaking of, so I've been posting all around about Jason Diamond searching for John Hughes. Do you have that memoir on your to-be-read pile? I do pile? not. Oh, I do not. I think I you, saw it on some place, but no, I don't been, have it everywhere and and it, i've been posting about it obnoxiously because jason is going to be at point street reading series in in um a couple of weeks on december 20th and you oh, annabelle great. monahan are going to be here in rhode island at point street reading series on tuesday march 21st so everybody and i got the better down. weather didn't i we hope we don't know. Yeah, March, March feels better than December. Glamour Lion, absolutely. I, my prediction is every Point Street is going to be a glorious, weather-filled day. There you go. Well, I'm really excited. I can't wait. <laughs> I am very excited that you'll be here. Oh, you you have to read. Um, so you'll put, put that one on your list. And I was going to ask you, what would you like to recommend? What is on your to-be-read pile? Or what have you mm. read lately that you just loved? Uh, you know, I just finished um, reading an arc for a book called Win at Losing by Sam Weinman, and it actually comes out December 20th. Uh, so I just ordered an actual copy. But this book is its all about turning our failures into triumphs. And it's just stories about people like Dukakis, you know, politicians, athletes, mm-hmm. who have just failed miserably and then recreated themselves to a much better place than they would have been had they won. No, I like that. And it's such an important story, I think, for a culture that is so focused on winning, and especially mm-hmm. people who are raising children to think they all have to be winners all the time. You know, our children sort of collapse when um, things don't go their way. They don't have a lot of experience with losing. They all get a trophy when they leave the Everybody gets field. a, you get a trophy, and you get a trophy. Because we're all now. special. You know, it's just, <laughs> it's a really, I just think it's a really timely, important book. I just loved it. I and in like fiction, that. I just you. read Ove. Man called uh, that how you say it? Man called yeah, Ove. That's, yeah, Man called yeah. Ove. And there's a new one, I think, by that author coming. I have not read that yet, but did you like it? I've heard. I really, really liked it. Okay. It's yeah, very it's different. different. It's a okay. very different voice. Um, but I, I was so surprised that I liked it, but I really liked it. I'm glad to know that because I have. Every, if one more person tells me to read it, I get that all the time. You haven't read as if I could read, you know, the thousand some odd books that come out each week. I sometimes I, decide not to read the books that people are telling me too much about because I'm I'm an, I'm sick of hearing about it. Well, that's exactly. It's kind of like I by the time stubborn. the holiday comes, right? You want to put antlers on your head and just shut the world out. And that's the thing. I, I don't read a lot of times. I don't read the ones that are so you know every book club's reading them and. And people will ask me why, and I'll say sometimes, I just don't want to, not interested. And, you know, rarely is it a huge miss, but I like to hear when somebody whose taste I respect, as yours, says that it was, you know, worth the hype, because sometimes it's just like enough already with this book. I think people just jump on because everyone's jumping on. Well, I think you have to be really careful with book recommendations. You know, it's like movie recommendations. Yeah, My mother liked the worst movies, and it took me a long time to figure out that if she recommended a movie to me, I was <laughs> not going to see it. I was you known just have in to the know. family. That's so funny. I was kind of known in certain circles as being that person also, so they wouldn't, or they would ask what I didn't like. Wait, which were some of your mother's favorite movies? I bet I like them. Do you remember? Okay, I don't the, remember. The, I'll tell you, the last movie she ever saw uh, mm-hmm. was Australia. Oh. Is that was, right? With Nicole Kidman, that one? Yeah, I would. And not in a million years would I see that movie. And no offense to Nicole Kidman, that does not like, interest me. I liked that movie. <laughs> All right. When, well. when you think about it, when you have nothing better to do, and I'm on the phone with uh, having a, a girly chat with Annabelle Monahan, <laughs> does this Volvo make my butt look big? I'd love to know some of her other favorite movies. I do have some also very fine tasted movies, but it, I, I, I've been known to like some clunkers. But there's a reason that I like them. Yeah, yeah. I, I might like some of your mom's 
movies. I liked Australia. I remember that. It was it was quite epic. And yes, no, she liked that. She had the she gun liked that. or something. I kind of remember that. That's funny. And I'll I'll end with this on on page one hundred and forty one. You talk about well, just all the things that women have to do, and you you reimagine the or you share the wording from the Anjali commercial. <laughs> I was reading about the, the the frying it up in a pan and something about involving perfume, and all of a sudden now that Anjali commercial is stuck in my head. So I want to say, oh, I'm so sorry. Thank you. I was looking for an apology. Annabelle Monahan does this Volvo make my butt look big. Find her at AnnabelleMonahan.com. Find her on Twitter, on Facebook, on Instagram, and right here in Rhode Island on March 21st. It will be a gorgeous day. Annabelle will be here to share stories and laughs and lots of people saying, yeah, got to get those antlers off of my car. 